Hello everyone and welcome back to the Power Mac 7500 series. In this episode I have everything I need to test out the computer so I will be doing exactly that. I will be getting it up and running and we'll see how that goes. First of all I've actually got a couple of changes that I made to this computer after the previous episode. First of all I reprinted out this power button so that's now looking a little bit better. This cover here which I broke in the previous episode I JB welded it back together and I sanded down the top a little bit so it looks better. It's obviously not perfect, but it is all in one piece again, and nobody is ever going to see this. And that's what the other side looks like. Next up for the power button, and I don't know how well you can see that, but I put a big blob of hot glue on the motherboard in order to keep it in place because I noticed that it really wasn't uh, staying where it was supposed to be with just the solder. So now that's working perfectly. I've also 3D printed out these case clips here, which keep this whole top part in place. And I also did end up breaking this kickstand piece over here in the last episode, and I was going to 3D print a replacement one, but unfortunately my 3D printer broke in the middle of the print. So I'm gonna have to wait a couple of days to uh, fix the printer, but I'll have that installed in no time. I've also got this new hard drive for it. This is a one gigabyte drive and it's a 50 pin SCSI, which is exactly what I need. I paid about 40 bucks for this on eBay, which is not insane. I was gonna look at a SCSI 2SD originally, but those are all over $100, which I didn't realize. So I just uh, went with a regular hard drive. Maybe in the future when the price comes down, I'll put a compact flash card in here. But for now, this will work just fine. So let's get this uh, SCSI hard drive installed. The first thing I noticed when I got this was that it is a little bit too tall to fit in this upper slot of the case here. However, there it is. Apple has thankfully provided a second slot down here and that is gonna fit in there. So that's where I'll be putting it. And oh yeah, I forgot to mention this but I did put a little bit of JB Weld on this as well because it's broken. Um, anyway, let's get this uh, put in. I've got my standard PC case screw set here, which is very handy to have. I recommend everyone should buy one of these. The other thing I noticed that I did wrong in the previous episode was I actually put these uh, EMI shields on here wrong. They're supposed to, and it's upside down too, but they're supposed to kind of mesh in right here and I just uh, had them all on the outside so they weren't snapping in properly on the sides, which is why it looked a little bit messed up in the previous video, but there we are. Now let's get the drive plugged in. Okay, and the hard drive was the only thing missing out of this computer, so now I should be able to test it. Let's go do that. All right then, I've got everything set up here. I've got my Compaq S510 monitor here, an Apple Design keyboard and an ADB mouse too, as well as my Harman Kardon speakers here. And everything is plugged in with the exception of the monitor, and the reason for that is this. This is a DB15 to VGA adapter. If you didn't know, these early Macs had their own video cable because Apple, so you need a little adapter to convert it to VGA. Now this thing has 10 different dip switches on it, and I'm not sure what they do. Um, so I'm just going to leave them in the configuration that I got it in, um, and I'm going to see if that works. By the way, huge shout out to my buddy Henry for, loaning, or for uh, trading me this keyboard as well as the adapter. So anyway, let's get on to testing this machine. All right, without further ado, let's get this powered on and see what it does.
doesn't uh, look like we're getting any kind of picture on this monitor. So uh, I'll uh, mess with the cables a bit and see what happens. All right, guys, I'm a dummy. Turns out the reason this wasn't working is not because of the video modes on the monitor. Really, it's because I reseated the RAM in this computer earlier and one of the sticks must not have been pushed into place. But now it does seem to be turning on. So let's uh, turn it on and get Mac OS installed. And there we are, the monitor has powered on and we have a cursor and a happy Mac. I put a Mac OS 8.6 CD in here um, and it seems to be working just fine. All right, so here we are on the desktop and I've got 48 megs of RAM in here, which is not bad. And I do apologize for the flickering here, but there's really nothing I can do about that. Anyway, um, pretty sure I'm going to have to format the hard drive. And this is a custom CD that does have some uh, custom stuff on here. But I guess uh, let's just go to disk first aid. Nope, not disk first aid. I need drive setup. And not supported. Um, hmm. Guess I'll have to figure something else out. Okay. So I looked on Reddit, someone else had the exact same issue as me on some other computer, and this person recommended FWB Hard Disk Toolkit, and someone else said that uh, that works well and that they even used it on Apple drives back in the day. So this should uh, let us format the drive and it'll install its own drivers so that it'll work. Let's go uh, get that set up. All right, I've got my titanium power book here, and there's a copy of this on Macintosh Garden, so I'm just gonna download it. And this should be a bootable CD of Mac OS 8.5, and I can just burn that. Okay, I've got a blank CD in here, and this is a toast file. And I don't have toast on here, but I do have burn. And looks like, yep, that'll work. Let's go ahead and burn that. All right, so that just finished. And here we are. It looks like, yes, we've got a system folder. And I guess I'll just be able to boot off of this. All right, let's put this in the Power Mac and see what happens. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Okay, so we are on Mac OS 8.5.1 now. And it looks exactly like it did before. I guess we'll have to install it. Is it crisis recovery? Looks like it, okay. All right, there we are. That is the disc. So, 
we will have to auto initialize, I guess. And yep, Mac OS extended. Okay. And let's see how this goes. All right, that worked. Cool. Um, so I can just browse the disk now. It's got its own special icon, which is a little interesting. And I don't think we need to install this. Um, it might say, oh, I guess we do. Oh, no. Yep, I need to install the system first. So, cool. Looks like that's set up, and let's go back to the Mac OS 8.6 CD. All right, little bit of an update. For some reason, after installing the disk drivers, I wasn't able to get Mac OS 8 to boot again. I tried two different CDs, 8.5 and 8.6, and neither of them were being recognized by the computer. But it is reading this Mac OS 9 CD, so I'm just going to go ahead and install that. You can see the hard drive is completely recognized. I can write to it. And, well, let's just go. And yes, it is seeing our disk here as a destination. And I can install to it. Awesome. All right. So everything... Let's just go ahead and install everything. And, uh... Okay, well let's not do this, but let's install everything else. And there it goes. I'll come back to you guys when this is done. One little unexpected thing, it is giving me this message saying the hard disk driver can't be updated because it isn't an Apple hard disk, and it isn't. So, uh, we'll just continue. The uh, disk toolkit I installed should be compatible with Mac OS 9, so we'll have to see. All right, and it looks like that was a success, so I will quit out of this. And let's restart into our new installation. All right, here we are in Mac OS 9. We've got a set of assistant to go through, and can I open the Apple menu? I guess I can, like that, all right. So there we are on Mac OS 9.1, and it is running off of the uh, hard disk we set up. Let's see if we can put this in 800 by 600. There we are. Don't even need to set anything else up, and I can do millions of colors too. And one more thing. Let's see if I can go ahead and turn on the platinum sounds. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's cool. So yeah, maybe I'll do a part three for this where I try out some software on here, um, do a little bit of upgrading. I did end up passing on that uh, G3 upgrade card uh, just cause I've got uh, two or three G3 machines already, so I'm gonna be perfectly happy with the PowerPC 601 on this. Um, but yeah, I'll get this set up, I'll be right back. All right, so that is gonna do it for this uh, episode on the Power Max 7500. We've got it all set up and running with an operating system installed, and I think that's a good place to leave off. I might do a part three on this in the future, uh, trying out some programs and uh, games or whatever. But for now, there you are. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a good one.